Surely this is not another microphone from Shaw on the desk right now. <laughs> so we already knew this thing was going to have an air of quality about it, and it's really definitely not disappointed me. This thing is known as the Shaw MV6, and it's a smaller version of the popular MV7, and follows suit of pretty much every other Shaw Dynamic microphone we've seen come out of the audio giant so far. But being a USB microphone only, it has got some reliance on what's going on inside of the computer that you've plugged it into, you know, at a software level. But we'll talk about more of that in a moment. For now though, let's talk about the microphone itself. So sure are touting this microphone as a gaming microphone. However, I do think they are selling themselves a little bit short here, but I also do understand why they've done it as well. The microphone is incredibly capable and has a lot of control in terms of peaking and compression. Your voice in this thing does sound great. And I must say that if you're also going to be wanting to create some kind of podcast or even content creation, like I'm doing right now, as everything that you've currently heard is being recorded directly into this NV6 here, you're going to be able to do it with this microphone. But sure do have their podcast for Focus microphone already with the SM7 or even the MV7. And I think that they're trying to really fill a gap here, calling it a gaming microphone. But then I suppose this microphone does cost only £129 here in the UK, which is really a third of the price of an SM7B roughly, and then also half the price of an MV7. And though the SM7 is an XLR microphone that requires a lot more gear to get started, this little MV6 requires a single USB connection of which a tiny USB Type-C cable is provided in the box to plug it into your laptop. Now, this is a little frustrating because as Shaw probably expects as well, gamers who are after this type of microphone are not going to have them on the desk where every single vibration is going to be heard from slamming down on a keyboard or even in rage on the desk. You could probably hear this right now. So why not include a really long USB Type-C cable in the box? Charge an extra fiver for it if you really need to. It just makes sense when gamers are going to be using boom arms anyway. Now instead, this included cable is really only long enough in instances like this, where I have it plugged into a laptop, which is sitting right next to me. You can't see it at the moment, it's off camera, but my laptop is literally just here. But let's drop that for now because ranting over the size of a USB cable, I think is a little bit silly. So let's talk about the microphone. It's very simple to look at. It's a cylindrical tube that is branded quite heavily in the bottom half with a shiny smooth texture and a headphone port and a type C output on the bottom for monitoring audio and plugging it into a laptop or PC. And the top half is dedicated to the microphone unit itself and also has a pop filter on there. Exactly the same style as the SM7, just a much smaller version. Now the pop filter is removable if it does need cleaning which is nice and there is a touch sensitive mute button on top just here and it does have a light so you can easily see if the microphone has been muted as it will glow red and green when the microphone is active it does come with a small desk stand which you can see it sitting on right now in the box though the fittings are pretty universal if you need to use it with a boom arm or other microphone stand being a usb microphone it does require of course a pc or a laptop to use of which i'm using now and sure software can be downloaded to aid your recording efforts when using the mv6 now the the software is called Motive Mix, and it's essentially a virtual mixer in which you can add up to five microphones to it and manually adjust various settings. Let's take a look at that now. So if we were to have a quick look at the software here, you can see that it is really pretty well laid out. The mixing desk or virtual mixing desk, should I say, appears here where all of your connected audio devices will appear down that left hand side. And you just click and drag like I have done with the short input over into this mixing desk here. You've also got a uh, monitor that you can use. The monitor I've got uh, connected at the moment is of uh, using the um, 3.5 millimeter auxiliary input on the bottom of the microphone here. But of course I've got no headphones on because I don't really need to monitor the audio in my situation. And then I can see the complete output and the levels that I am getting here, as you can see, output meter, and then also the channel gain as well. And you can do that on an individual level, channel gain and uh, a slider there to change that if needed. So depending on people's voices within a certain situation, if you've got more than one host on a video, you can get that changed. Going down to the settings menu here on the actual microphone itself, it probably won't allow me to enter 
the settings while I'm recording. So unfortunately, we're going to have to stop recording on this microphone and go back up to my shotgun microphone ahead. So bear with me there. And now we have paused the recording to jump into the settings. If I click done, that will save in the folder I need it to save into. And then you can see device settings is glowing. So if we click on that, that will open up this side panel here of which I have locked my settings, but click the unlock button and then you've got everything here. First one being mute, pretty simple there. You can mute the microphone. I have my gain set at auto level, but if you need to a little bit more manual control over your gain, and if you click and drag, and you can change it manually right there, you have got the decibel scale that you can see which is really nice, but again, I just have auto level on my gain. Switch that off, you've got a manual decibel gain as well, so that's really nice to see. Monitor mix, so you can uh, monitor your mic level in your headphones, and then, um, as you can see, playback level and mic level as well on there, so you can mix that. Tone, I am currently on a natural tone. I have left this completely alone, but if I was to test this now, which of course we won't be able to do because I'm not recording on this microphone at the moment. We're on the shotgun microphone ahead. A test will be inputted in right now. So this recording here is me using the natural sound setting and this quality here is turning it all the way down to that 100% level on dark. And this is the audio that you can expect or the audio quality you can expect from that. And this is the tone slider set all the way to the top. So 100% brightness in my voice, which gives it a little bit more present. Well, I'm not sure at the moment. I haven't heard it yet. Uh, some presence to my voice, um, but Depending on what kind of voice you have, you will have to find a balance there between that to get the best audio quality imaginable. Um, but yeah, you have to play around with that setting yourself. But yeah, those are just the three examples of what uh, the audio sounds like. After that, you do have your real-time denoiser, so you can turn that on and turn off any kind of background noise if you have got it close to a PC, for example, with some whirring fans, or if there's a bit of drilling going on outside and you need to start recording content, then you can do it that way. And then you have got a pop-up stopper as well for things like your plosives, which I do have switched on, but you can turn that off if you wanted to, and that is just a toggle. Finally, high-pass filter, where you've got 75 hertz and 150 hertz high-pass filter on the software. And that is pretty much it with the Shure software. You can set up your scenes uh, very much down the left-hand side here. I've only got my one active scene at the moment where I have got my mix uh, my speakers from my laptop if I wanted any kind of playback there and then also the microphone which is grayed out at the moment because it is active within the virtual mixer on the right hand side but that is really the Motive Mix software that Shure are really introducing to you. It's very, very simple to use. So the final settings I did want to talk about is down in this bottom right hand corner. Apologies, I had to uh, stop the recording again because to get to the recording settings I'm not allowed to be recording. Uh, under here, you have got your save preferences, so main output only or main output and all individual sources. So if you've got any other sources within that uh, virtual mixer, you can, out, um, you can output all of those if you wanted to as well. Uh, your audio resolution, the file format that it comes in, the output, and then also destination folder if you wanted to change that. And then the audio resolution for output, 32 to 48 kilohertz on there. So. Not bad quality at all on this software. Being a dynamic microphone means that the pickup pattern, especially on this microphone, is pretty front and center, and the fall off from speaking into the sides and rear of this microphone is very controlled, which is nice if you've got some clicky keys on your gaming keyboard on a desk. The proximity effect again here is very nice because of that sure microphone tech we've all come to love, and because of those built-in auto features within the software, it's a nice microphone to be able to have on top of you or really a little bit away to the side as it'll auto adjust based on the input level that it can detect. However, have it too far away and it'll really start affecting your audio quality. So I'm recording directly into the MV6, holding it about a hand span away from my face. And now I'm turning it 90 degrees, talking into the side, 180 degrees to talk into the rear of the microphone so you can hear the drop off and then back to the center again so you can hear what it's going to sound like this way. So the proximity effect with the microphone directly against my mouth and this is what it's going to sound like. I am 
speaking a little bit more quietly for that auto gain to sort itself out. You can't quite see it, but this is the microphone, again, a hand span away from my mouth, and this is what you can hear. And if I move back, say an arm's distance away from the microphone, this is what it's going to sound like. And with the microphone on the desk, I'm just tapping very lightly on the actual desk itself. Now I'm tapping very lightly on the stand and then on the arm connected to the microphone itself and then on the body of the microphone itself as well. I am now typing while talking into the microphone just to see what it's going to sound like when you are using a keyboard like mine, a mechanical keyboard with mechanical switches and also talking into the microphone as well. Okay, so I have jumped, jumped into a game of New World. No idea why, but uh, it's something that I've picked back up again. And I just wanted to give you a quick demonstration of what this Shaw MV6 is going to sound like if you are going to be using it for some kind of let's play or content creation while gaming, because of course it's being marketed as a, as a gaming microphone. So of course, why not just play a game while using it? So here we go, quick demonstration of what this microphone is going to sound like. And to be perfectly honest with you, this microphone sounds absolutely superb, I think, uh, in terms of the quality that you can expect from that. It's a really, really nice microphone. The Shure MV6 is a superb microphone. There's really no doubt about it at all. And to be honest, when the worst thing that I could say about this microphone is the stupidly Shure included USB type C cable, you know that Shure are onto a winner. It's definitely capable of being more than just a gaming microphone as they're calling it so you could use it for your content creation, like I am now, though in my opinion, but at the same time, it is a bloody brilliant gaming microphone as well. Thank you very much for checking out this video review of the Shure MV6 USB gaming microphone. Gaming microphone, not really, just a microphone. If you did enjoy it, please hit that like button, subscribe to keep up with our latest tech and gaming videos, and also let us know in the comments down below what you thought about the audio quality here. Is this Shure microphone something you would have on your gaming setup, or are you using something else entirely? Let us know in the comments down below. As I say, thanks very much for watching, and we will see you in the next video. Yeah.